to go back um, to, the, to the process that we were talking about, so now what we can see is that the RecA filament can, can carry out this strand exchange process. Um, that's the, that leads to the displacement of the D loop, uh, the, the strand that used to be part of the original double stranded DNA molecule. And there can be also now the establishment of new DNA replication. And this theoretically could go all the way to the end of some replicating, replicating structure. There's still one problem left in this. Uh, in this process, and that's that there's still a crossover here, uh, which after a little bit of branch migration and ligation turns out to again be a holiday junction. And that holiday junction has to be resolved or there isn't going to be ability for these two replicating molecules to come apart. So again, we need to look at the consequences of holiday junction resolution. So again, as I said, uh, holiday junctions can be cleaved either on the top strands or the cross strands, and the two outcomes are different. If they cross on the, on the A orientation, these two molecules come apart without any exchanges, but if they cut in the B orientation, then there's going to be a, an, a, a crossover, and here we call that crossover a sister chromatid exchange because we're looking particularly at the case where we have restarted DNA replication between two uh, to allow the formation of two sister chromatids. We can visualize sister chromatid repair and sister chromatid uh, exchange in mammalian cells in a, in a fairly easy fashion. It turns out that you can grow cells in the presence of an analog of deoxythymidine called bromodeoxyuridine. And this will essentially incorporate bromodeoxyuridine in many of the sites where deoxythymidine should be placed in DNA replication. And one ends up with a DNA molecule after a single uh, uh, generate or after growing the cells in bromodeoxyuridine so that all the strands have, have bromodeoxyuridine label. If you then take away the bromodeoxyuridine label and allow the cells to go through another round of DNA replication, then, as, as Messelson and Stahl first showed for E. coli, one ends up with semi-conservative replication. So one strand has bromodeoxyuridine on it, and the other strand has only uh, has, uh, deoxythymidine uh, wherever there are Ts in, this, in the structure. And then, if you allow this to replicate again in a second division, now only one of the four strands of the, of, of the products of this replication is going to have bromodeoxyuridine. Um, associated with it. If there's no crossing over associated with this process, then one's going to end up with a molecule uh, which has a single uh, line of bromodeoxyuridine along the replicated chromosome, and that's shown uh, over here. So here is, a, here is a DNA molecule which has essentially a continuous line of bromodeoxyuridine reflecting the situation on the left. But the situation on the right, which is illustrated to this arrow, has undergone one of those crossing over events, a sister chromatid exchange. And that can be seen, understood, because now, instead of having just a continuous line of bromodeoxyuridine on one of the two sister chromatids, there's been a crossover. And that crossover places bromodeoxyuridine on part of one sister chromatid and the other part of the other sister chromatid, which is illustrated here. So one can see evidence for these sister chromatid exchanges by using this bromodeoxyuridine trick. Now, normal cells turn out to have quite a number of these events, even in the absence of any other perturbation. So the normal process of DNA replication, as I showed you before at the beginning, you take away the RAD51 protein, you see all these chromatid breaks which are places where RAD51 recombinase is required in order to patch up these, these regions. Here, what we're seeing is another uh, uh, consequence of that process because that means that during the process of sister chromatid repair, there are frequently sister chromatid exchanges, which are, are the outcome of that uh, break-induced replication process. Um, we can make these chromatid or these chromosomes are remarkably uh, uh, exchanged by adding DNA damaging agents. So that if we increase the likelihood that these chromatids need to have DNA repair mechanisms in order to finish the process of replication, we end up with these so-called harlequin chromosomes. Uh, harlequin was a, 
uh, a comic character in, in uh, Renaissance uh, Commedia dell'arte uh, uh, plays in, in, in Italy, and he wore a costume that had black and white um, uh, uh, checks on it, and so these are called Harlequin chromosomes. And you can see every one of these represents another sister chromatid exchange uh, on these chromosomes. Um, here's a picture of Harlequin that, that, that I found that, that sort of just illustrates this. Um. So um, what we also learned from this is that if we impose DNA damage on these cells, we're going to have an increased frequency of repair and an increased frequency of these sister chromatid uh, exchange events.